Hey team, welcome back to the channel. On this week's episode, I am going to talk through how I hunt my snapper and the things that I do to increase my chances yeah. of getting that big 20 pound dog. Finding like cray spots. Oh yeah. Just got side scan. Oh. I'll show you. But all you have to do is drive along a coastline and it shows you what boulders and rocks are under there. Okay. Yeah. The new Staby Craft is proving to be an absolute weapon. I've taken it out so many times already and it is just perfect for two or three Spearows, four Fishos, uh, and it's just getting the job done and keeping us safe out on the water. So I get in the water here and what I'm doing is I'm just looking for good bommies or drop-offs that I can set burlies over. Um, the first thing I do is just identify those spots so here I've dropped down onto this bommy and I'm just scoping it out to see how huntable it is. So I get to the very tip where I would be looking down at a burley. So there's a nice sandy patch in the back there with a lot of broken weed around it. That's perfect in my eyes for hunting snapper because with the sand being behind them it gives you a nice silhouette of the snapper swimming in the, around the burley. So, Yep, I decided that was a great spot to set a burley. So the next step for me is I go and find some kinna and I crush them up. Generally on the surface, I'll just split them open and throw them over the ledge uh, so as not to scare too many snapper away. Um, shout out to Luke Potts for that. I mean, he was the king of uh, doing that. He was the first guy I saw on YouTube doing that. So, uh, and basically, I was self-taught from his videos. So. He's a legend in my eyes and he is the best at snapper hunting on YouTube. So shout out to you brother. So after about 30 seconds of letting the burley soak, I, uh, I check it for the first time. So a lot of guys will go away for like 10 minutes but I just, I get too excited. I pretend to go and look for craze and then I end up just like, where's my gun? I need to check the burley. So anyway, I'm here. Uh, I picked the gun up from the top of the bommie. Um, that's what I like to do so I can just make a nice relaxed duck dive pick my gun up on my approach and then scope everything out so this is my first check and there's nothing decent around there's just a lot of juveniles which is what happens in most cases um, so I'm a little bit conscious whether to take a snapper here or not but because I know if I take one they will just spook and then it will take time to generate all the small ones in again so yeah so I decided not to take one um, I was in two minds whether to take one there and then I just swim back away from the ledge if you swim directly up you're likely to scare the decent fish off the burley so second trip down um, I gave it a little bit more time and I'm just making a nice, calm, slow approach. Trying to be as relaxed as possible. And I can see out of the corner of my eye there, there's a few more fish. Um, a lot more legal sized snapper swimming around. So I just take a lot of time getting to the very end of this bommy. Trying to keep my body in the weed. Trying to keep my profile as low as possible and some of these snapper are just swimming in mid water but they can obviously sense me um they know something's up they know something's something big's in the water so yeah a lot of the easily legal snapper sort of take off before i even get to look at them so all in all things are looking up the the snapper numbers on the burley are going up and i'm seeing a lot more legal snapper so I go back to the surface, have a bit of a breathe up, and then I third dive down, and I saw this guy and his tail just waving away underneath the kelp, um, and he was super hard to spot because he was right in under the kelp. So uh, I pushed out, and he just had paid no attention to me, and he was just too focused on the kinnaburly, so I sh smacked him top down. Uh, the only bad thing was there was a rock directly behind him and it absolutely flattened my spear so I was gutted because we didn't have any spear shafts on board and I didn't have a file in my dive bag so 
I was a little bit gutted, but anyway, it was worth it. It was a good fish. It was probably around the six to eight pound mark. Uh, and it was only the third dive of the day, so things were looking up. Uh, and considering the conditions, it was dead low tide, and there was a decent amount of snapper in the shallows. So let it soak for a little bit longer, go down, check it again, and like I was saying before, once you take a snapper from your burley, sometimes the snapper will just not go anywhere near the burley anymore. So this was the next dive after I shot that snapper and as you can see there's just no snapper around, there's no snapper swimming in mid water, um, everything's just gone. So that's why when you take a snapper off your burley for the first time just be a little bit conscious if you're going, if you want a bigger fish maybe just hold back and give it one more dive just to see what else comes in. So yep here I just clear the weed from my flopper um, and there you can just see I flat the end of my spears but anyway that's all good. But yes Clear the weed from your flopper guys because that will just send your shaft straight up when you go to shoot your next snapper. So here I just wanted to try something different so I went from a different angle on the same burley and sometimes I'll just lie in the kelp just to see what comes past. Sometimes you can attract things like Kahawai or John Dory or um, any of those other reef fish by just lying in the kelp uh, with your head down and um, here you can see a nice kahawai swim past which I should have taken but yeah so the burley was set sort of in that direction there so I end up going to a different area and I crush up a whole heap of kinna uh, just swim around with a rock and I just pick a nice bombing to the side of where I was hunting and yep just crush up a whole heap of kinna on the bottom So I'm about to approach that next spot and same again I leave my gun where I want to approach from. So I pick it up and same again just creeping super slowly over the top of this rock. Keeping an eye out for any decent sized snapper that might be just over the ledge. So I think I got the approach wrong here, the burley was actually just around the corner. So can't see anything and I'm thinking that's strange so I just make my way around and then I can see there's actually a whole heap of snapper on the burley so there's one that is similar size to the other one I've shot so you can see him down there he sort of sees me and then he starts to move away and then I make sort of a quartering away shot which I usually have no issues taking um, but in this case I just clean mist and so I go back through my footage and I realize that the shaft was actually well bent to the left. Uh, it could be for a number of reasons, could be when I shot the first snapper that it slightly bent my shaft. It could be that uh, my arm wasn't fully locked out making the recoil of the gun shift my hand. Um, giving the, the spear a different angle. It could be any one of those reasons. So, So yeah, had another dive on the same spot and then I end up just pushing right out into the open water, trying to see if there's anything under the kelp and then I'm just about to head to the surface and then I see what I think is a boarfish, but no, it was just a red mookie. So on I go.
And yep, so pull up the anchor and pick up Daniel and we're off to a new spot. Shoot him! Uh, I managed to get one good snapper. Um, nice, nice eating size. So, um, yeah, I just set a burly and uh, he came in on it. So, lots of just over legal snapper. Missed one, sort of a little bit smaller than that one, but. Uh, no, pretty good diving. There's a lot of snapper in the shallows, even though it's not very fishy here. So, yeah, got a couple of kin up for a recipe that I want to try as well. So, looking forward to making that. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go pick Daniel up and we're going to go try another spot. And then, um, once the current starts pushing, which has just started now, we might go and try for some kingies. So, yeah, see you soon. So we moved off to a different spot on Kowau, the front of Kowau Island itself because um, we would basically spooked everything out of the area we were working and this spot looked really promising. I've never dived here before but uh, just wanted to give it a crack and the conditions were just beautiful. Um, the viz was about six, six to eight meters so it was okay, um, good enough for us anyway. So I'd set a burly over this ledge in this new spot. Uh, so same thing again, pick my gun up on my approach, head towards the point where I would be looking down on the burly. And I made a mistake here. I, I set the burly too far away from the point where I was going to be looking at it. This was bad because if I wanted to take a shot on a nice fish, I'd have to expose my whole body before I could get close enough to take a shot. So just keep that in mind when setting your burlies, guys, just keeping them nice and close to your ledges. So anyway, team, uh, I hope you learned a little bit from this and I hope uh, this helps with your snapper hunting next time you're out. But if you like this, just let me know in the comments and I can do a lot more how-tos on my stray lining, for example. But anyway, team, Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.